You're watching Visiting Yellowstone. If you take the time to drive Yellowstone's upper loop, you'll have the opportunity to see some of the park's main attractions, but you will have some decisions to make regarding how much time to spend at each stop. Hopefully this video will help you make those decisions. When you take this drive, you'll pass lakes, waterfalls, picnic areas, and hopefully wildlife that are not mentioned here. Yellowstone covers 2.2 million acres, and it would take a lifetime to see everything this park has to offer. During this video, if this icon appears on the screen, it means there are additional videos that supply more detailed information about those locations. Visit our Inside Yellowstone webpage to find those videos. We're going to start the tour here in Gardner, Montana. Check out this old row of storefronts, just like the old west towns you see in the movies. These stores are so close to the park that if you step off the sidewalk, you're stepping into Yellowstone. Down here on the right, there used to be an old train station. In the early days, almost all of Yellowstone's visitors arrived by train. Look here, we're going to drive right through the Roosevelt Arch. It's welcomed visitors since 1903 when President Theodore Roosevelt helped place a cornerstone on this historic structure. Keep an eye out for pronghorn, mule deer, and bison for the next mile or so. There will be a bit of a delay here while we wait in line to get our entrance pass. A variety of different passes can be purchased at the entrance station. You'll receive a map with your receipt stapled to it and a park newspaper. Hold on to that map. It will let you exit and enter the park for seven days. Read the newspaper as soon as possible. It offers great advice and information. You can find a fee schedule and an online version of the newspaper on the park's website. The canyon up ahead is a good place to watch for bighorn sheep. If you see people along the road with their binoculars out, there is a very good chance that sheep are visible on the cliffs. The Mammoth Campground is the only campground open all year. This is a great place to go for an evening program. As you pull into Mammoth, be sure to stop at the Albright Visitor Center and check out the museum. Rangers there can answer your questions and offer advice. A self-guided tour of historic Fort Yellowstone begins just in front of the Visitor Center. Be sure to look for self-guiding trail brochures in post at the beginning of many of our trails. In the Mammoth area, you'll also find a hotel, a store, food services, and a gas station. This tall hydrothermal feature is called Liberty Cap. It's just one of the many strange features at Mammoth Hot Springs Terraces. You can explore these picturesque terraces from here by following a series of boardwalks that take you to some of the more attractive hot springs. When you start seeing terraces on the right, be prepared to pull into the upper terrace drive. This short loop weaves through some neat springs and terraces. If you have a disabled visitor with you, this loop can allow them to tour the terraces from the comfort of your car. It will take a couple of hours to do a quick tour of the Mammoth Hot Springs area. That's Bunsen Peak over there. You get a great view of Mammoth from there. See these rocks? You know what? Pull in here, Daryl. These are the hoodoos, which are old terrace deposits that tumble down from the mountain above. It's great fun to hike among the jumbled boulders. We're coming up on Golden Gate. Every time they widen the road, they move that 24-ton pillar. The cliffs were formed when hot volcanic ash was welded into rock. There's a cool historic photo in the Wayside exhibit here. Swan Lake Flat is a good place to see wildlife in the spring and the fall. By taking a short side road, you can explore Sheep Eater Cliff. It was named for a band of Shoshone Indians. This cliff was formed when basaltic lava flows cooled into columns. We won't be driving into any campgrounds, but you can learn about them by watching our video devoted entirely to campgrounds. Pull off here for a second, Daryl. The stagecoaches used to stop at Apollinaire Spring in the old days. It's fun to imagine stagecoach passengers wetting their whistles here. Be sure to pull in at the Obsidian Cliff exhibit. 
This great old exhibit is on the National Register of Historic Places. They used columnar basalt in its construction. Native Americans fashioned arrowheads and knives from the obsidian they found near here. It is a form of natural glass. Please remember, it is illegal to remove anything from the park, including obsidian. See the steam coming out of this hillside? That's Roaring Mountain. The steam is coming from fumaroles, our hottest hydrothermal features. If you've got an interest in the history of the National Park Ranger, pull in here. The museum is staffed by retired rangers. Hopefully it will give you some insight into the evolution of the modern day park ranger. At Norris Junction, turn right into the Geyser Basin. Here you have the opportunity to explore one of the hottest geyser basins in the world. There are two loop walks here, one into the porcelain basin and another into the back basin where you'll find Steamboat Geyser. When in full eruption, Steamboat is the tallest geyser in the world, but it is unpredictable and has gone as long as 50 years between eruptions. This area can easily take a couple of hours to tour. Heading east from Norris, you'll be cutting across the center of Yellowstone's loop road system. You will have a choice between taking a short two and a half mile one way loop past Virginia Cascade or continuing on the main road. While Virginia Cascade is a lovely cascading waterfall, if your time is at all short, it might be wise to save some by staying on the main road. On the main road, you may want to stop at the Norris Canyon Blowdown. There is no sign, but watch for it as you get to the top of the hill. These trees were knocked down by a storm in 1984 and then burned in the famous 1988 fires. The area appeared to be horribly devastated in 1988, but a quick stop now reveals the truth. Recovery from the fires has been amazing. This is Canyon Village. The first building you come to as you pull in is the Canyon Visitor Education Center. Be sure to spend some time here. Its rangers can help answer your questions about the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. The exhibits focus on Yellowstone's supervolcano and other aspects of the park's geology. You'll be amazed at how interesting the geology exhibits can be. You'll also find food services, camping, lodging, and a gas station here. We got here midday, so we decided to grab a bite at the grill at the Canyon store. There is also a cafeteria and a restaurant here. By taking a short drive south from Canyon Village, you can explore the north or south rim of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. You can pick and choose between numerous stops at the canyon. One of the turns is marked the brink of the Upper Falls. After a short walk from the parking area, you'll find a platform built right at the brink of the falls. This is a fun stop and a great place to get a feel for the power of the river. A bit further south is the turn marked Artist Point. That's the South Rim Drive. Watch out the right side of the car after taking this turn. The falls there is not very tall, but it's very pretty. While heading down the Artist Point Road, you'll notice a left turn into Uncle Tom's Trail. This is a real old trail named after a tour guide from the stagecoach days. Here, nearly 300 stairs lead down into the canyon. This trail offers a close-up view of the lower falls. In my opinion, you'll get the best view of the canyon from Artist Point. There is a spectacular view of the lower falls, which is 308 feet tall and one of Yellowstone's most famous features. The numerous stops at the North Rim Drive are also visible across the canyon. If you are going to tour both rims, Plan on spending at least a few hours here. Many people devote a full day to visiting this area. After visiting the canyon, you will again pass Canyon Village as you travel north toward Dunraven Pass. On the way to the pass, there are pullouts with great panoramic views. If you notice some white spots in the woods below, you are looking at the Washburn Hot Springs. This pass is at 8,859 feet, and this is where you'll find the first of two trailheads for the Mount Washburn hike. We're going to continue up to the second trailhead, which is around five miles further up the loop road. 
There you'll find Chittenden Road, which will take you up to the trailhead. If you don't want to subject your car to a two-mile washboard road, maybe you should use the other trailhead. Even from the parking lot, the views are outstanding. From the top of the mountain, they are spectacular. The hike to the top of Mount Washburn is three miles each way from either trailhead. A fire lookout is stationed at the top of Washburn. We're now on our way back down the mountain, heading toward Tower Fall. These pullouts have a nice view of Antelope Valley. If you've got good binoculars or a spotting scope, this is a great place to look for bears or wolves in the distance. Tower Fall is beautiful, so its tiny parking lot is often jam-packed in the summer months. An easy walk from the Tower General Store will give you a great view of this 120-foot waterfall. A somewhat longer trail leads to the Yellowstone River. A very nice little campground is just across the road. I've done lots of evening programs in that campground. Right up here, there's a series of overlooks above the Yellowstone River. Nice views of the river below and bands of columnar basalt in the cliffs across the canyon make these pullouts worthy of a quick stop. You might also see some bighorn sheep in the area. Use extreme caution and stay behind the rock walls. We lost a couple of people to deadly falls here in recent years. For some nice panoramic views, stop at Calcite Springs. The area is named for the hydrothermal features in the canyon walls. This corral on the left offers horseback rides, stagecoach rides, and chuck wagon steak cookouts. We didn't show you them, but there are two other corrals on the loop, one at Mammoth and another at Canyon. If horses are your thing, there are several locations where you can ride. Turn left just beyond the corral and you'll find Roosevelt Lodge. Teddy Roosevelt camped near here once and the lodge was named in commemoration of that visit. A small general store provides for basic needs. When my friends visit for the first time, we always stop at the Petrified Tree. A short drive will get you there. Don't try to do this if you're driving a motorhome or pulling a trailer. There isn't enough room for you to turn around at the end of the road. Watch for black bear and moose throughout this entire area. Okay, Daryl, it's coming up right after these trees. Yep, that's it. The Hell Roaring Overlook pullout is very easy to miss, but if you watch for it, you'll be rewarded with a spectacular view. There's a side trip option at Blacktail Plateau Drive. This one-way dirt road meanders through open meadows and ends back near the petrified tree. If you've got a little extra time, it's well worth taking. I like to stop and walk across the meadows here. This little used trail is a good place to learn about the northern range while taking a peaceful stroll along its boardwalk. I haven't mentioned our picnic areas yet. There are nearly 50 scattered around the park. If you want to save a little money while you visit, pick up some food at a general store and make your own meals. There are plenty of picnic tables in beautiful locations. We're going to pull into Undyne Falls for our last stop of the day. Yellowstone is famous for its waterfalls. While we've found time to show you a few on this video, there are others we haven't mentioned. If you like waterfalls, set aside some additional time to visit them. Coming down the hill back to Mammoth, you can see the Hot Springs Terraces from a distance. The white stone visible on the hillside there is Terrace Travertine. As you pull back into town, stop in the visitor center again. Now that you've spent some time in the park, you'll probably have some new questions for the rangers. If you tell them about the wildlife you've seen, they can pass the information on to other visitors. I hope this video will help you plan your time on the Upper Loop. It is not a complete list of all the possible stops in this area, but hopefully it will give you some ideas on some of the places you'd like to visit. While you can do the Upper Loop in a day, I think you'd have more fun if you do it in three, or a week, or a month. It is impossible to see all Yellowstone has to offer in a lifetime. But on your next trip to the mountain, spend as much time as possible here.